This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. We're going to read Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He'll not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, neither rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him, for he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. You know, God understands us so much, so much more than we understand ourselves. When we're showing our behinds, he's still loving us. He's understanding us. He's trying to help us. He's trying to calm our spirits. So this is what I want. I want to share something. This was comical. When I was at the store the other day, I was listening to these young people. They were probably between 19 and 21. And they were talking silliness. They weren't saying anything substantial. They weren't saying anything insightful or earth-shaking. I got the cutest delight just listening to them talk about nothing with such enthusiasm and all the awkwardness and the silly, goofy laughs that go with young, with, with youth. And I was delighting in hearing their voices, hearing them interact with each other. It was silly. It was a conversation about nothing. It could have held its quietness and not even been mentioned. I mean, it wasn't anything that the world needed to hear. Let's put it like that. It was just a silly, young, nothing conversation. It was so cute to me. And I thought about now, what must it be like to God when he watches his little baby brats walking around, going through life, having little hissy fits, tripping over stuff that wasn't even big enough to trip over, <laughs> um, getting excited about stuff that had no real importance, um, just watching us and delighting in us like a parent delights in their baby. And while they're delighting in their baby, the baby is just sitting there, I, just doing little baby stuff. Can you imagine that? That's something that always gets me, how God can get such delight out of us, how he could be so mindful of us. Even when we're not doing anything that big. I remember a time, I, 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 this happened to me a number of times. I didn't have anything to do. I was bored. So I said, well, let me read the word. And I went and grabbed the Bible and sat down and read the word. And I felt God smile. Can you imagine something that ordinary? And I felt God smile. That blew me away that he actually took delight in me reading his word. Now, what I want to say to you is God is so much more mindful of us than we are of him. God cares for the most insignificant things in our lives. 
I remember one time, for example, I'm trying to share with you why you need to lean on him with every moment, with every every time that you are feeling like a big baby, every time you're acting like a big baby. Listen, understand that God wants you. He wants you to call on him. He wants you to lean on him. He wants you to understand that he is with you, that you're not on your own, that you're not someone that nobody cares about. Because once you find out how much God loves you, what anybody else thinks really doesn't matter. It pales in the fact that God loves you, truly loves you. Sometimes it's so ordinary to hear that because we, we've heard that down through the years. It turned into a cliche in the 60s and 70s. God loves you and so do I. I would be like, ah, you know, you don't even know me. So, but God really does love us more than we can ever know. God is aware. He understands why we trip the way we do. He understands why we get excited about some of the silliest things. He likes when we're happy. He's sad when we're sad. Even when our sadness is is from being a big baby. There were times I, I would look back and I'd be crying to the Lord about stuff. I mean, oh my goodness, it would be such a big deal to me. And when I look back at it now, I, I could almost roll my eyes off of it like, oh brother, who was I a mess? But God didn't roll his eyes. No, he didn't roll his eyes. He showed me his compassion. Even when I was acting like a big old baby. I mean, an immature, spoiled brat. He still showed me his compassion. He showed me his tender mercies, his concern. It's like a, a little kid who stubs his toe or scrapes his knee and they come running to mommy or daddy like the world has come to a bitter end. And the parent is trying not to laugh because it's not a big deal. But they're holding the baby and they're, you know, comforting and reassuring and doing all the little stuff that you do for little kids at that level. Well, imagine the level we're at. God has to baby us because we're such big babies. We're such spoiled brats, aren't we? But God takes the time in all his holiness and all his grandeur. He always has the time to reassure his big babies. <laughs> and he takes delight in comforting us. That's the part that gets me. As big a job as he's got running the universe, running all that exists, he still has time for a little insignificant me and insignificant you with our little insignificant problems and our little insignificant annoyances in life and the things we get bothered by, the things we get annoyed by and the things that aggravate us and God is just looking at, oh, look at my little spoiled brat. But he's my brat, he's my baby, she's my baby. Come on, sit on daddy's lap, come on, come on. <laughs> The patience, the patience. We can't even put up with each other. We can't even put up with each other. And God puts up with us like that. We get bothered by each other and mad at each other. Half the time it ain't even worth getting upset about. But we do it anyway, don't we? All these hissy fits we have to go through over a little bit of nothing just because we're being spoiled and things ain't going the way we want them to go. 
And God is right there to comfort us through our self-pity. He's there to comfort us through our misunderstandings. He's there to comfort us through our childishness, through our immaturity. He's there. He's there to comfort us through our emotional upheavals. Mm, mm, mm. I love God. I love the way he takes such good care of us. We don't have to be giants in the universe. We don't have to be politicians and rich people with clout and all kind of pull on society. We don't have to be part of the powers that be on the face of this earth. Just some little insignificant nobody is a very important somebody to God. I don't care how small you see yourself. I don't care how small you think others see you. God, God does not see us that way. He does not relate to you that way. When I am totally wrong, God does not put me down for being stupid, for being childish, for being so immature, I'm sick of you. He never, he never talks to me that way. And there are times I get sick of myself. Trust me when I say that. But God's patience, God's love, and his mercies are from everlasting to everlasting. Your friends will fail you. Your church members will fail you. Your family members will fail you. There is no if and or but about that. It will happen. But God will never fail you. He said in Joshua chapter 1, I will never fail you. I will never fail you. Oh, I got to read it. I want you to hear God's reassuring words. He's talking to Joshua, but take this personally. Sometimes it's good to take something personally especially when you're dealing with God's promise. He's talking to Joshua, and he says, Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. That was after Moses' death, yeah. Moses minister saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. See, all that stuff back there is dead. It's dead and done. That's history now. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, and this is your promise, y'all, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses so Will I be with thee? I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be, of, only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Yes, yes. I love that where he said, I will not 
fail thee. Oh my goodness. You have no idea what a promise that is. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Promises to be with us. Oh, that is so comforting to me. When I feel like my friends have forsaken me, when I feel like nobody cares what's going on with me, when I feel like nobody's rejoicing with me when I'm excited and nobody's crying with me when I'm sad and nobody could give a flying you know what. Nobody's thinking about me. Nobody is even uh, giving me a second thought. I'm the last thing that, that they think of and the first thing they forget. Oh, I feel that way sometimes. But one thing I know, God never forgets me. God is always on my side. God loves me with an everlasting love. That brings me so much comfort. You have no idea. Life would have been so much harder without me knowing that. I needed that. And God reassured me of how much he loved me back in 1981. I will never forget it. And I thank him to this day for that night of him revealing his supernatural galactic out of this out of the hemisphere <laughs> love toward me. When you know that God loves you, you can handle so much more what life throws at you when you know God loves you. God's love is comforting. God's love is stabilizing. God's love is strengthening. God's love is healing. God's love is reassuring. Oh my goodness, God's love is edifying. There's so much that God, God's love does in our lives. If we could just understand how much he loves us, how important we are to him when no one else places any importance on us unless we're serving their purpose. When no one else has the time, no one else can be, they could, they could be bothered. They couldn't be bothered. They could care less. Our reassurance, our strength, our hope is in God's love for us. God not only loves us, he knows us, he understands us. He gets why we're weak. He gets why we're so, we're such big babies. He gets why we're so scarred. He understands why we have an anger issue, why we have temper tantrums, why we pout why we cry, why we get hopeless, why we get angry. God understands it. And he understands us. Be encouraged. One thing you can do with God's love is pull on it, y'all. One way to pull on God's love is ask him to heal you on a daily basis. Heal you from all that old mess that happened in your past. Heal you from all the times when people said cruel things to you and acted like they didn't care. Heal you from the times when you were molested, from the times you were raped, from the times that they used you and played you and, and played you like a fiddle and could care less about you. Those times when you felt like a fool, those times when they belittled you and put you down and criticized you in public and made you look like an idiot in front of all your friends and you never got over it. Those times where they, they mistreated you for something you didn't even do and they blamed you for something without even asking you if you did it, without even giving you the benefit of the doubt. The times when they didn't care what was going on with you and they, and they punished you for something you didn't even do. I mean, there are so many things, so many times of neglect, needs that weren't met, things that didn't happen for us that should have happened because our parents were human and flawed themselves. And God can heal every one of those scars, y'all. 
every single one so completely that there is no more residual effect. There is no more pain. And where there is no pain, your temperament is so much more mellow. You don't fly off at the handle. Pain makes you go off. And a lot of times we've got our pain buried under so many other issues in life that we forget why we get so angry about stuff. Why we get so easily annoyed. Why we flare up. Why we blow up and go off. But God understands. And he wants us to come sit on his lap and let him minister to our emotional scars, our psychological hang-ups, our, our, our personality flaws, our ugly characteristics. Mm. He wants to take you and make something beautiful out of your life. He'll take a wretch, a wretch like me, and show me his love and concern. And by his grace, he'll make my life a new and better one. Oh, yeah, he'll do that for you. Yes, he will. But you have to keep going to him when you're right and keep going to him when you're wrong, when you're dead wrong. Keep going to him. God bless you and watch what he does. The more you lean on him, the more changes you will see in your life. Amen. Mm -hmm.